right, this is your brother Aisha Yar coming at you with another lesson. First off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rekah Kwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone to learn this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Akwath that's listening and learning. Today's video is going to be entitled Fear and Trembling, the response. And I'll respond to this response. <laughs> all right. This video was put up by the elder Manata Zakba from South Carolina, and he was responding to a video that Apostle Tahar did a while back. And pretty much within the beginning of this video, you hear Apostle Tahar get into the spirit on how he doesn't like being around lukewarm individuals. He doesn't like being around people who doesn't have a zeal or some type of fire for this truth, man. Because, you know, you're around people that's not really about this life and everything like that, man. It, you know, it can bring you down in the spirit. Not saying as far as, you know, it'll bring you down to the point where you'll stop doing the work, but you'll get irritated. You'll get frustrated. You'll get angry. You'll get ready. You'll get to the point where you're ready to do the work. But then somebody else holding you back because they not uh, anxious about this, man. And pretty much Apostle Tahar was getting into the spirit and how, on how he was like, man, look, the Lord going to kill a lot of you so-called Israelites because you all are not doing according to the scriptures, man. I always say this all the time, too, man. I'm like, man, the first thing you should think about is the truth. In the middle of the day, you think about the truth. At the end of the night, you think about the truth. And that's when you pray, too. You pray in the, be in the beginning, in the middle, in the end, man. You should always be in the spirit of, man, what, what lesson am I going to do tomorrow? What can I do to help out the, the, the ministry? What can I do to push this gospel, man? Because this is our whole duty now, man. We have nothing else to do. This is our life now, man. Our life is to push this word for Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Like Apostle Tahar always say, we are working for the king of the universe. You do not slack when you work for the king of the universe. All right? You got to get yourself together, man. We all see and feel it, man. We in the last days. Any one of these days, something can happen. And you don't want to be got caught out there lacking, man. All right? So let's go ahead and get into the uh, video. I'm going to play the first you know, a couple of minutes of this video so you can hear the apostle himself. And then we're going to go straight into the scriptures. Turn the screen. All right, let's go. You're not on fire about this truth. You're not anxious about going out there in the highways and the byways and doing these videos. Then just leave, man. Because you're going to get kicked out any goddamn way. And I'm going to see how many of y'all have... Uh, done your three videos a week because if you don't you better fear and i'm not talking about the most high fear i'm talking about you're gonna have you gonna have to fear me because <laughs> you're gonna get kicked out the camp or get suspended it's irritating to be around men that are fucking weak man you fucking weak motherfuckers, man. Now, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, destroy every last one of you. You weak niggas, man. I hate being around weak niggas, man. May Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Shalak, Rayam, to you weak, lukewarm niggas. You gotta go! You don't have to fear, Mokai. Mokai gonna kill you, man. Motherfucker, the most high going to kill you. You weak niggas, man, you weak niggas. All you motherfuckers that fell off, all you motherfuckers that, that, that that's weak, you the weak man. Don't be around, don't come around us, man. Don't come around us with that weak shit. The most high going to kill you. You're going to suffer the same fate as Esau. Yeah, how about show me how Shai going to kill you, man? He going to put you to death. He going to show you his fear. You little freak ass motherfuckers. I hate being around weak niggas, man. Weak in the spirit. Either you're with this thing or you're not with this thing. So there you go. You heard it. You heard it, man. All right. And this is the type of spirit you should be in when you were a part of this truth, man. 
Like I said, you're supposed to be putting in your all, especially within these last days, man. We don't have nothing else to do. What else you really going to do? What else is holding you back from doing this truth, man? As you can see, everything that's going on in the world right now is going to shit, man. I literally just had a conversation with an Edomite, man. They bringing up the conversation more than Jake. They bringing up the conversation. They know that this thing is getting ready to uh, pop off, man. I'm having a conversation with the Edomite. He telling me, man, you know, it's getting wild out here. You know, one day the restaurants are open. The next day is digital only. One day I can go inside the restaurant. The other day I only can do drive through. I can't find any baby formula anywhere. The food shortages are happening. He, and he literally said, he was like, I can only imagine how everything is going to happen by the end of the, uh, end of the summer. He said the way this inflation is going, he was like, man, things are going to be skyrocketing, man. Superbly expensive. Esau is over here paying attention to prophecies more than you all out there, man. And so at the end of the day, when it comes to this truth and you are part of this truth and you know this truth, how much more should you be in this truth? How much hard, how hard should you go then, man? Like I said, you have nothing else to do. Nothing else to do. Fuck the NBA playoffs, man. Fuck the NBA championship. Fuck playing the game. All of that shit, man. You got to put in this work every single day. And like he said, three videos a week, man. Three videos a week. You see brothers doing that. Man and brothers upload videos every day. Just like myself. And none of us are bragging or boasting. But it's the fear of the most high. And I'm going to start off with that with Isaiah 33 and 6 because that's a scripture that I left on Elder Manata Zakba's uh, video. So I'm going to start off with that. I left it in the comment section. This is all you should be thinking about, man. What else are you really going to do? Yeah, how is Shai is getting ready to come back, man? He's getting ready to come back. And as you heard Apostle Tahar say within a video, if you're not a part of this truth, you're going to have to die the, the death of Esau, man. That's humiliating. That's disgraceful. That's shameful. Here it is. You are Israelite. You are Negro, Latino, and Native American, right? You have the truth right in front of you. The Most High stretching out his hand so he can pull you up and save you from the destruction. But you don't want it because you having things a part of the world make you lukewarm or cold um, as a whole, man. That don't make no sense. This is Isaiah chapter 33, verse 6, and it says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Now, we normally bring this scripture out, especially when we're speaking about Jacob's trouble, because you're going to need this wisdom and knowledge so you can be stable throughout Jacob's trouble, man. Because we're going to get into situations where we're going to be tried, man. We're going to be tried, and the Most High is going to see if we're going to fold or not. But wisdom and knowledge is going to be the stability of thy times. But you can use this scripture as well for right now. Because what do it say at the end? It says the fear of the Lord is his treasure. If you fear the Lord, if you really fear the Lord, man, you're going to go do what you're supposed to do. You're going to examine yourself every single day. You're not just going to sit around and just be like, yeah, I did enough. I'm all good. No, man. You're going to try. You're going to strive, man, to your best of your abilities. OK, because you're going to have the fear of the most high upon you. This wisdom and this knowledge is going to keep you stable. Every time you get into a situation, a scripture going to pop in your head, a quote that a brother made, something that you went through. It's going to build you up within the spirit, man. So the fear of the Lord is his treasure. This is better than gold, silver, money, women, palaces, mansions, clothes, cars, all of that shit, man. You have the fear of the Lord upon you. As soon as you get into a situation, you're going to think about who? Yeah, how about show me how shy? And if you're not doing that, guess what? <laughs> the fear of the Lord is not upon you. And that's going to lead you to your destruction, man. Because it's a scripture that tells you that fear leads into humility. And the humility leads into obedience, so forth and so on. I'm going to have to find it. But it tells you the fear is the start, man. This is Revelation chapter 3, verse 15. And it says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. All right. Just like my brother Sar Sahar said, we was at camp one time. He said, look, man, when you get a cup of coffee, or a cup of tea or a can of pop 
and it's warm, what you going to do? You're going to spit it out because you can't enjoy it, man. It's not it's not cool. It's not good. It's nasty. It's disgusting. And that's what two thirds of our people are. They're garbage, man. And when you come into this truth and you're not putting in your all, you pretty much making yourself garbage. And what do you do with garbage? You throw it away. They put it in a the truck. They crunch it up, man. Smash it. Get rid of it. That's exactly what your Howard Shah is going to do to the ones that's not on fire. He said, I'm going to spew you, spew thee out of my mouth, man. He's not going to think about you. Those going to be those same individuals that's going to say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name? And what you have a shot going to say to you, man? I never knew you. I never knew you. He's going to allow you to be destroyed, man. People got to get with it immediately. Immediately. We ain't got that much time, man. You can tell. You can feel it in the air, man. You can feel it in the air, like the um, like the brother brought out from GMS Awakening 144. He literally did a video, uh, and he named it that. You can feel it in the air. It's getting ready to happen, man. This is Romans chapter 10, verse 1. It says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to the Most High for Israel is that they may that they might be saved. For I bear the record that they have a zeal of the Most High, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of the Most High's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of the Most High. There you go. A lot of you all have the zeal of the Most High, but not according to knowledge. A lot of you will say, yeah, I know I'm an Israelite. I know I'm this. I know I'm that. And you'll go out there, put on the front. But as soon as camp is over or as soon as you get to the crib or as soon as somebody call you and your friends or your, you know, your woman or whatever call you, you, you lose all focus. You lose all focus. And then ultimately that builds up to you doing something you ain't supposed to be doing. Here it is. You go to camp the next week. You know, you're supposed to be bringing out scriptures and brothers could just feel that energy. They're like, hold on, man. Something wrong with you. Usually you come out, you like this, you like that. You bringing out the scriptures this week. You kind of, oh, what, you all right? <laughs> you know, you got to, you got to examine yourself, man. You got to look in the mirror and be like, look, all right, man, I'm, I'm ready. Let's go. I remember the brother um, from the GMS Chicago camp, Yaron Meyer. He said, look, man, be, you know, he said, I like to train. I like to do this. I like to do that. But before I do any of that, I make sure that I read my few chapters a day. I make sure that I upload my video. Because, of course, you got to balance. Because the positive heart bring that out as well. He was like, man, you got to give brothers room to breathe. All right. So, and, you know, in the midst of your time, you'll go out and, you know, do certain things. And then you relieve yourself from the work and everything like that. But at the end of the day, as soon as you get that little bit of rest, you hop right back on it, man. You hop back right back on it because the more that you slack, that's the more that you'll forget these scriptures, man. And that's the, the more that the spirit is leaving you. And what uh, what did uh, King David say? He prayed to the Most High. He said, please don't have the Holy Spirit removed from me, man. He want the Holy Spirit to stay upon him. Yeah, we do. Because when these things get ready to happen, man, we don't want to be caught out there spiritless. We don't want Esau to roll up on us and then we have that fear and be afraid so much to the point where we just like, okay, 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 I'll take the MOTB. What, nigga? <laughs> Excuse me? You through. You through. So you're supposed to be on fire right now so you can prepare yourself for what's getting ready to come. Because the most side, he could put you in a situation where you don't even have to take the MOTB, man. He can have you live all the way <laughs> until Yahweh Shai comes back and Yahweh Shai can kill you himself. And that's fucked up. <laughs> all right. He can kill you himself because he is getting ready to do a lot of killing. He's getting ready to be unleashed. He is gonna, he's the king of the jungle, man. The lion from the tribe of Judah is getting ready to be unleashed upon the whole world, man. So if y'all not with it, guess what? If you in his way, whoo, what you how I say himself, better it was for you not even be born, man. This is Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. And it says, um, and it says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You have to understand this, man. 
You have to understand that we are in these bodies. You gonna you gotta understand. You are gonna make mistakes, and you gotta understand demons are more acceptable to come upon you than the Holy Spirit, man. All right, because you gotta understand that we are part of this world. We grew up with a certain mindset or mind state. We get into certain situations, and you know, man, Satan can mess with you. But what we just read in Isaiah thirty three and six, though, it says the fear of the Lord is a treasure. This is what get the spirits away from you, man. Those demons. You call upon those names. Yeah, how about show me how was shy? And he guides you, man. He makes sure that you're okay. So your spirit got to be willing, man. And you got to let that spirit overcome this flesh, man. You never get to the point where you be like, all right, yeah, I made this mistake today. You know, I'll be all right. No, 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 man. The most high is merciful, yes. But he doesn't ha always have to be. He could be like, he already know every single one of us individually, personally. So you can make a mistake and he would be like, man, he could be up in the heavens right now. and be like, told you he was going to mess up and get rid of him. And you thinking that you all good. Come on, man. This is not a thing to be playing around with, man. You're supposed to get to the point where you're just like, yeah, man, I'm ready to teach. I'm ready to bring out the word. Understand how, how great and beautiful this truth is. You're getting ready to be a part of a world, a part of a, man, universe, part of this word that's going to excel and prosper, everlasting, man. We're getting ready to receive everything. We're getting ready to be, re be released from this hell. Why would you do anything else? Why would you do anything else, man? Who cares about what people think about you? All right, you're going to lose family. You're going to lose friends. People going to talk about you behind your back. It's going to happen, man. Because like the scriptures say, we go out there and we become fools for uh, Yahweh Shai's sake, man. But that's okay, because guess what? Those fools are going to be lifted up. Like it speaks about a wisdom of Solomon in the fifth chapter. When these things happen and they see that we eating, we drinking, and then we ultimately get away from the nuclear destruction. These people going to be like, yep, man, they the ones who stood firm. Believed in what they were, were taught. And now look at them. They getting away from the trouble. If you're not on fire for this thing, man, you ain't going to get away from the trouble, man. Like Apostle Tahar said, you're going to die the death of Esau. What the hell, man? Let's get 1 Thessalonians 5 and 14. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14. And it says, now we exhort you, brethren, war them, warn them that are unruly... <laughs> <laughs> read it again now we exhort you brethren warn them that are unruly comfort the feeble-minded support the weak be patient toward all men see that none render evil for evil unto any man but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men rejoice evermore pray without ceasing if we see that you weak we suppose to uh Take videos like Apostle Tahar just did to the heart, man. When you hear brothers get into the spirit like that, man, you got to remember that is the most high speaking through those brothers. That's not of themselves. You got to remember we're nothing but vessels full of Lord. He's using us to bring in his word and to exalt his name. So when you hear videos like that, you should automatically fear the fear. Yeah, how about show me how it's shot? Because that's him speaking to you all, man. Us included. Just because you see brothers on fire, that don't mean that they don't humble themselves. They get to the point where they just like, yeah, man, I'm finna do more. They're like, man, you know, I'm gonna make sure I read more. I'm make sure I get into the Hebrew more. I make sure I upload maybe another an extra video a day. That's the spirit you're supposed to be in. Because when you hear things like that, it should, it should, it should make you tremble, man. It should make you shake in the in, in, in spirit. It should get you to the point where you're just like, all right, man, let me stop bullshitting. Let me get my shit together. And that's why it says in verse 17, pray without ceasing. Pray to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah to become stronger. Especially now. Like I said, it's only a matter of time before shit hit the fan. You don't want to be caught out there assed out, man. Let's get 1 Peter 4 and 17. This is 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. And it says... For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of the Most High. 
And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? <laughs> Judgment is going to begin with you that know that you're Israelites. Why? Because you know better. You know what you're supposed to be doing in this world, man. You came to the understanding that you are an Israelite and now you know that you're supposed to separate yourself from the people. You're supposed to be living by the commandments, statutes, and laws every single day, right? You're supposed to be uploading your videos every day, going out into the highways and the byways all the time, pushing this word, doing the best that you could possibly do. It says it begins with us. We're about to see a lot of people that was a part of this truth perish because a lot of people that's a part of this truth are going to be two thirds. That's messed up, man. Here it is. You know that you are Israelite, but a lot of y'all still going to die. <laughs> Come on, man. Just because you wasn't doing the right thing, man. You wasn't in this thing with sincerity. Verse 18, it says, The righteous scarcely be saved. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner, sinner appear? Here yeah, we're going to be scarcely be saved. The At the same time, while the missiles are being shot over here, that's when the chariots are going to come and beam up his elect. At the same time, man, getting them out of here quick. That's why the, that's why the scriptures say our bodies are going to be changed within the twinkling of an eye. That's how fast we're going to get beamed up in a chariot, man. We're going to be changed as fast as you can blink. Scarcely be saved. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? In the fire. In the fire. What shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? Death. Nuclear destruction. Being terrored by the beasts of the field. Being called by martial law. Most high putting you in a situation where you may be a victim of cannibalism. Understand, man? Let's get Isaiah 66 and 1. This is Isaiah chapter 66, verse 1. And it says, Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me and where is the place of my rest? For all those things have my hand made and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. He that killeth an axe is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yeah, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. I also will choose their delusions. And will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. You hear that, man? This is what Apostle Tahar said at the beginning of the video. He said, yeah, how about Shemmy Yahushua is going to show you your fear, man. His fear as well. All right? He's going to make you fear him in, within these last days, man. He's going to bring your greatest nightmares to life. Well, it's saying verse four, I will bring their fears upon them. Every single one of us think about situations that we don't want to get into. And we'd be like, man, we hope we don't have to get caught out here within those situations. But there's going to be a lot of people that will. Why? Because they're not applying themselves right now. Verse five, it says, hear the word of the Lord. Ye that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you. That cast you out for my name's sake said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. Yeah, the ones that was on fire, the ones that understood these videos, the ones that applied themselves correctly. Joy is going to appear before you, but everybody else, they're going to be ashamed and ultimately they're going to be put to death, man. And that's a shame. Because like I said, you're going to have to die right beside your enemy. Here it is. You might be in a city or whatever. You might see an Edomite right next to you, a Moabite right next to you. And then you see the elect get beamed up. Then the next thing you know, you see that great wall of fire coming towards you. You standing right next to your enemy. And now you got to suffer the fate of your enemy. Wow, man. <laughs> I don't understand why you, why you wouldn't want to just get into this, man. Let's do what you're supposed to do. Let's end it with this. Uh, Philippians 2 and 12. Because this was the title of the video. It says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, 
But now, much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I remember uh, Elder Yashawamba was speaking about how a lot of brothers lean upon other brothers with, with things that they say. They may hear a brother say that they do this within their everyday life. Another brother may say they may do that. He was like, look, man, every situation don't fit you. He was like, this is why you got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Just because you hear one brother live a certain way doesn't mean that you should do the same, man. You got to apply your life to what's in your lifestyle. For instance, for me, you know, shit, I work all the damn time, man. You know, you see different brothers or whatever in between work. They know when they go home, they probably got kids, got to take care of the house or whatever. They may not have time to do a video. So what do they do? They do videos on their lunch break. <laughs> you know? They they fit it in somewhere. Somewhere. I'm quoting all kind of brothers. Just like from, uh, the brother from GMS Chicago. Uh, the brother Shapatya, he did a video, I think, last year. And he was just like, man, look, I asked for three videos a day. I mean, three videos a week. And they told you that the minimum was 10 minutes long, man. He was like, out of a seven-day week, you can't give the most high 30 minutes? 30 minutes. Out of a seven-day week. Because there's no excuse. Everybody can have some type of chill time. Everybody do. Because if not, you wouldn't be able to talk about the UFC fight. You wouldn't be able to talk about the new movies that came out. You wouldn't be able to talk about the new TV shows and so forth and so on. There will become a time in the middle of the day where you can sit your ass down. <laughs> and before you get into whatever you enjoy, put in your 10 minutes. Upload the video, man. Wake up the elect. What is saying in Revelation 7? It says, until the elect is still, we're going to be here, man. How the elect is going to wake up if they not taught this truth? <laughs> Come on, man. It's, it's not that hard to understand. Do the work. It's going to pay off in the end. You're going to receive a crown. You're going to be beamed up in a chariot. You're going to be the first fruits of the kingdom. Yeah, how was shy instead of looking at you with that angry eye and killing you, he's gonna walk in front of you and say, Good work, my faithful servant. <laughs> Man, sometimes it just tweaks me out, you know. <laughs> sometimes it really does, man. It really does tweak me out when you know when you hear videos like this, and then you really look and be like, damn, there's brothers out there that's actually living like this. Knowing that they have a way out. But it's all through prophecy, man. Two thirds of our people got to go. And two thirds include people that know that they're Israelites. And that's, whew, that's wild. So I'm going to end it right there, man. So let me read verse uh, 12 one more time. This is Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. It says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, much more in my absence. <laughs> Is the Lord here right now, man? No. What, what does it say? But now much more in my absence. Since you know, since you, we see the signs, right? We know that Yahweh Shai is getting ready to come back. But he said, but now much more in my absence, meaning he's not present. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Why? Because Yahweh Shah said, you know not when the Son of Man will return. Get with it, man. Get with it. I hope this is edifying. So with that, I'm saying call Halayim. Yahweh Bahasham. Yahweh Shai. Bahasham. Rekak Wadash. Double honor to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Akwath that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Rat Tazah, I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala. Keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.